so I'm actually going to be doing some flight training here with uh, Warrant Officer Lane, who's one of the recent graduates of flight school. Uh, he's going to take me over some formation flying, things like that, that I haven't had a chance to do lately. Uh, actually, I haven't had a chance to do at all. Uh, so it's uh, pretty cool. We'll see how today goes. That is Warrant Officer Lane. Uh, he's a really good pilot. Uh, he's been with the 506 for a long time. Uh, he was infantry and all that stuff. Um, and then he moved over to Delta. Uh, and everything I've seen, he's done a really good job uh, while he's uh, went through flight school and everything. So he just uh, recently, I think last week, graduated uh, and was promoted to uh, Warrant Officer. Hear me okay on point one? Hey, firm. Cool. <clears throat> oh, them boys are sitting rough for training. They still short? Yeah. I'm going to just practice and mark up my map uh, for the uh, airfield runways and all that good stuff. Cool. Make sure you are in. Um, why don't you do it, do it in group chat, and then uh, I will uh, double check it. Actually, yeah, I'll just join your group. Do it in group chat. Okay.
Okay. Um, why don't you go ahead and uh, grab a black hawk and get that set up? Okay, sounds good. Shit, I'm like losing my mind here. I know how to do this, but I've done this a million freaking times. I'm set. Cool. Um, we get us a route here. So we're going to be practicing formation flying <clears throat> and whatever else he wants to do and he's willing to do, I'm willing to do. So uh, we'll see how it goes. I've never done formation flying. Uh, so I've been trying to work on maintaining my altitude and airspeed and through turns and things like that. So uh, yeah, so we'll see. Looks like we're going to depart out of the north, make a turn around the water, and come on down here to AC airfield. All right, so we're going to start by doing, uh, we'll do ground movement from uh, Mike 3, hold short at 07, taxiing down 22 right. Uh, then it's going to uh, taxi over at either Sierra 4 or Sierra 2, uh, over to 04 right for a... Um, northeast departure and that's going to follow right over uh tell us out to the northeast and then we're going to start a patrol from there okay sounds good i've uh yeah that sounds great got another map and everything a firm cool let's get on uh we'll get on seven five and get this started so 
Uh, now for formation flying, uh, we'll be... Well, I mean, I'm a Phoenix and you're a Lancer. Do we still call ourselves Phoenix Flight? Um, and is are you leading this first one? And then are, it does only the lead uh, talk on the radio? I, I, I'm not really sure how that works. Yeah, it's typically the, the lead is going to talk on the radio and talk to all the comms or whatever. Um, I'll take us through the first one. But yeah, you'll want to specify the details of your flight. So if it's going to be like... Um, you know, whatever the flight lead itself, um, remember that they're just call signs or whatever. So it's, you know, we'll go off of whatever the, the flight itself or the flight lead is. So this would be Lancer flight time or uh, flight of Lancer flight of uh, one times AH6M and uh, one times uh, UH6EM. So. Okay, gotcha. Flying the little bird. Gravity Air Base, Lancer signing on 75, uh, spooling from Mike 3 parking, flight of 1 times AH6 and 1 times UH60. Two spooling. Copy two spoon. Let me know when you're gonna take off RPM. I'm ready. Lancer flight of two aircraft moving from right from parking to zero seven rumble short. Gravity Air Base Shield Lancer one returning to Mike 3 parking for air. Hey, go ahead and move to the, uh, Well, he crashed. Must have had a problem. You don't gotta wait on me, go ahead and proceed with the plan. Oh copy, I uh returned and sat down. 
No, it was as I was transmitting or whatever, I didn't realize that I still had uh, my transmit key bound to uh, part of my cyclic, so it uh, threw me to the right. Gotcha. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue. Do me a favor and vote me admin as well, please. Walk through the process that we talked about earlier. Okay, done. I'll be back. No problem. There's his dead body laying there, if you can see that. <laughs> Gravier Base Phoenix Flight holding short at Sierra 7 for runway 22 right, taxi to Sierra 2. Gravier Base Phoenix Flight taking active runway 22 right for taxi. Taxi on an active runway, so I'm going to bump up my RPMs a little bit to get me down the runway a little bit. Normal taxi and speed is no more than 30 to 35 kilometers an hour, but we're going to go all the way down to Sierra 2. Gravier Base Phoenix Flight Clear, runway 22. Holding short at Sierra 2 for runway 04 right, direct departure, or correction, uh, departure to the northeast. <coughs> Gravier Base Phoenix Flight taking active runway 04 right. Grab your base Phoenix flight on. Grab your base Phoenix flight on runway zero four right, going full power. And 
and I just like lifted off way too much. Gravity Air Base Phoenix Flight signing off 75. Phoenix Flight signing on 70. bit. Come here. 
base, the Lancer 1 3, signing on 7 5, schooling from Wake Park 4, taxi 207 old short. AC or field Phoenix flight on the deck. Lancer, this is Phoenix on 71.1. Phoenix Lancer, send it. Do you want me to hold here or do you want me to meet you back at uh, Gravia? Uh, go ahead and head back. I'll, uh, I'll meet you halfway. Call in with you. Copy. <clears throat> Gravia Air Base Lancer 13, moving from Mike's Park Parking to 07. AC Airfield, Phoenix Flight, lifting off from helicopter parking for departure to the northwest. Correction, northeast.
Robbie Airbase, Lance are returning from rearm to Mike 3 parking for pull down. Gravity Air Base, Phoenix Flight, uh, signing on 75. Gravity Air Base, Phoenix Flight, on short final for runway 04 left. Base Phoenix flight taking active runway zero four left for Sierra seven. Grammy Air Base Lancers pulled down at Mike Park. Gravity Air Base, clear active runway, passing Sierra 7, taxi into Mike 3 helicopter parking. This body's still there. Yep, his body's still there. Gravity Air Base Phoenix flight on the deck and Mike 3 helicopter parking spooling down. Don't bother spooling down, man. Okie doke. Yeah, so the problem is, is every time I get into one of the little birds, I have no readout on any of my flight systems and no airspeed and no altitude. So aside from navigation, I'm basically flying blind in one of those. So every other ELA seems to work just fine, but it's just those, so. Right, gotcha. That's kind of weird. <laughs>
Bravo Air Base, Phoenix 1-3, sending on 7-5, break. It's going to be a flight of two UH-60 Blackhawks moving from Flight 3 parking over to resupply area. Bravo Air Base, Phoenix flight lifting from Flight 3 parking for resupply. Alright, let's go. Alright. Two's up. Roger, you go ahead and land at the uh, actual helipad there, uh, right in between the resupply crates, and I'll, uh, I'll land to the left of it, or in front of it. Copy. I haven't done this one yet. Spool down, watch your on deck. Copy on deck, spooling down. Grab your air base, Phoenix flight, spool down and resupply area. Alright, so do you have your uh, keybind set up for, um, hang on one sec. Do you have your keybind set up for doing all the uh, stuff with the uh, resupply and the uh, airlifting and all that? Uh, I don't have keybind set up. Uh, so, no. Alright, let's, uh... Do you know what the buttons are, at least, for, uh, like, uh, bringing up your uh, sling load assist and all that? Uh, you're talking about, like, the bracket keys to bring up sling load assist and everything? Uh, yeah, if it is on your bracket key, then yes. Yeah, that's what I have it on. Uh, bracket okay. key brings up sling load assist. And I've been using uh, Ace Interact. Uh, for, like, loading stuff and things. Yep, that's how it should be, so. Okay. All right, cool. Well, here's how we're going to do this, then. Um, we're going to go ahead. You're going to load. I know you can load more than one of these in here, because I do it all the fucking time. I'm loading this one right now, so. Anyway, so you're going to go ahead and load, uh, so you're just already loaded. So what I want you to do is um, we're just going to do a direct departure out to the southwest there. Um, and the air base that we were at before, you're going to fly over that, and you're going to drop your uh, your crate as close to that uh, helipad that's there, that's marked out to the, uh, to the west of the hangar there. Okay. And you're going to drop it as close as you can to that. Okay, sounds good. Cool. Um, also, when you get a chance before you leave tonight, 
make sure you change out your best for one that is uh does not have any ring tab on it and stuff. Oh shit! I I had them changed out. They must have uh, the vest must have changed. Uh, must not have saved. So yeah, I'll get them changed out. Cool. Um. All right. Yeah. Uh, you go ahead and do that, and go ahead and maneuver over there, and then I will. Uh, I'm gonna pull in here, move mine in, or load mine up, and then I'll follow up with the exact same. So. Okay. Cool. Gravity Air Base, this is Phoenix 2, spooling up at resupply area. Gravity Air Beast Phoenix 2, lifting off from helicopter resupply area for direct departure to the southwest, uh, correction, southeast. Gravity Air Base 1 3 Blackhawks, only for resupply area for sling load. Uh, gonna be. Step up. Airbase 13 Blackhawk, Phoenix 13 going to be uh, taxiing to Sierra 7 or fly around out to the south. Gravity Airbase Phoenix 2 signing off 75. Phoenix 2 signed on 7-1.1. Coming air base, Phoenix 1-3 is clear of active approach from 04. Correction, 2-2 approach. Alright, so we're going to see if I can do this and if laws... Vice helped. I want to drop it right where that mark is. So I'm going to be straight and level. Phoenix 2 cargo deployed. One copies. To this one, I tell you're green. I 
of missed, but... 1-3, Phoenix 1-3 is live on 7 zero. Pull up. Pull up. Oh, there it is. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. When land here at the uh, airstrip. Copy. Where the fuck did yours go? <laughs> I don't know. I thought that that was mine over there, closer to the, uh, closer to the, um, to the mark, but I guess not. No, that's the one I. Oh, I see it. I see it. It's right over here. Ah, uh, okay. There we go.
Well, it's not too bad. Well, I tell you, it's a hell of a lot better doing it in here because it's only a three second delay as opposed to the way I've been doing it, which has been like a 30, 15, 20 second delay. Um, and that was a nightmare. So, yeah. So uh, I, I could tell once I, I thought I was flying straight and level, but once I got into my menu and I was waiting for the, the countdown, I could tell that I was in a little bit of a right hand turn. Um, otherwise, I would have been off. Uh, off here a little bit, you know, further straight on. Um, the level issue is, uh, so keep in mind, um, when you're airdropping car uh, cargo crates or, uh, excuse me, um, resupply crates like this. Give me a second here. When you're dropping uh, resupply crates like this or whatever, you want to keep your speed up because the lower your airspeed is, um, generally speaking, two things happen. One, you're more susceptible to any enemy fire in the area. Um, and two, uh, the more pronounced the effects are on um, you uh, not being in a level uh, a level path when you're flying over. Like if you're hauling ass, it, it doesn't care as much as long as you have the right altitude. But if you're like moving like dead slow, even if you have the altitude, then there are times where it won't do it. So, okay, I got you. But I'm gonna hop back into Zeus and uh, move these crates back over. Um, we'll load them back up and then we'll do it again. So, okay, sounds good. So this time we're going to work in a formation flight alongside of this. So we're both going to depart off this runway to the west. And we're just going to keep comms while we're doing it. And then we're going to come around, fly like we're almost like we're flying to Kavala. And then we're going to circle around and come back this way. And we'll get ourselves uh, get ourselves a uh, good uh, approach path. And uh, we'll drop our cargo at the same time or whatever and, and try to get it on the mark. So... Okay, sounds good. Let's get it. Copy that. Once I get up here, I'm going to set my speed to about, uh, make it 120 and 50 meters off the deck. Copy 120, 50 meters.
Alright, looks like we're going to be at 100 meters AGL. Correction, ASL. Copy 100 meters. Alright, we're going to go ahead and start making our left turn to circle around, so stay with me. Copy. Once you get leveled out, make your speed 150 and altitude go 75 and line yourself up, drop it on the point. Copy speed 150, altitude 75. That was a horrible turn. Cargo away. Coming out to the right. Two copy. One set down. Ah, uh, come on. Pull up. Pull up. Two's on the deck. Loaded and spooling.
over top of you. Off your left. Copy. Two's lifting. to Kavala to drop this one off. Give me some practice on a helipad. Copy, you want me to follow you or you want me to keep practice in this? Ah, uh, why don't you follow me? I'll get you an LZ set up. Copy. Alright, this one's gonna be pretty tight. Uh, not much room for error on this one. Either you get it or you don't. Well, I guess there's one way you can kinda half get it, but we'll see. It's gonna be, uh, blue four marker 0803. Copy zero zero three. I'm going to do a flyover. You go ahead and uh, set yours on there. It's going to be reference uh, that blue. Marker. It's going to be a helipad on top, so set your uh, set your waypoint marker if you need to, so that way you can get a good uh, good approach on it. I'm going to fly past and then circle around and drop mine off on there. So copy that. I'm on approach from the southeast, south southeast. Copy, I tell you. One's coming around. Cargo deployed. Coming out to the west. Tally one.
I'm gonna hover at your four o'clock. Copy coming out. Tally me land where I land. Copy. Well, let's see where you uh, dropped your shit at here. Yeah, I saw a good plume right by the building, but I don't know uh, exactly where at. flying faster so I think I hit my uh, I think I hit my drop a little too quick yeah a good a good way to remember it is that the um, where you actually hit the drop like the the latency for the three seconds isn't really like it doesn't actually affect you that much as far as where the position is so don't try to base it off the timing of that three second drop try to base it off the timing of when you actually hit drop that'll help a lot Okay, that does that does help. So, um, so basically, like, and, and I don't know, you know, what Law said because he said he was pretty good at this part. He said, as soon as you as soon as you start to see the target hitting the bottom of your windshield, that's when he would be hitting drop. Is that kind of like how you do it? I don't do it. Th I don't do it in first person. I think that's uh, I think that's silly. Uh, most of the flying that I do is in is in third person. Um, oh, okay. And and the reason is is just the better situational awareness or whatever, and uh, and it makes me feel better as far as like being able to see everything, or whatever, and kind of see the surroundings. And it, I don't know, looks cooler. Yeah, no, no doubt. I I I, I pop in and out. Um, I I usually always land in third person. Um, I popped into third person to watch you on that one tight turn. So yeah, I'm in and out too. Um, so yeah. All right, so now I'm gonna set up two drops on top of the hospital and you and me are gonna fly in pretty much next to each other and, uh, and retrieve those. Yours is gonna be on the on the eastern side of the hospital, not on the helipad, but directly east of that. It's going to be like at the foot of the landing for the helipad, so. Okay. Yeah, you'll you'll see it once you get close, so. But yeah, we will we'll grab those and... Mm, 
drop them on this parking garage over here. Nah, you know what? We'll drop them just to the north of our position right now. In this little, uh, this little kind of area, just beyond the soccer field. So I'll mark it. I'll mark where we're gonna drop it. So uh, we'll keep it kind of. It's a good, tight little area for uh, for a drop. Um, now the thing for sling loading is. Is you can't drop it at speed. It needs to land. And think about it just like the instruction says. Think about it like you're trying to uh, place a bowling pin standing straight up. Roger. So you wanna you wanna level out and you wanna just guide it slowly to the deck um, while you uh, um, you know while you actually can, and, until you can actually see uh, the cargo drop and kind of the rope like slack out and then then you can release it so okay copy um did you fly in first person for that landing uh negative i was uh first person on the approach but then i popped into third person when i started going like you know um strafing left over top of you okay um, so yeah, so we'll I'll mark it on. Uh, actually, I'll 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 mark it with smoke. So after you grab yours, um, you'll fly around the city, and then I'll mark your position or I'll mark the drop with the uh, smoke uh, that I wanted with the sling load, and then you'll put it on the smoke. Okay. Sound good. Sounds good. Cool. You still have me on all the radio channels and whatnot, so. Hey, firm. not waiting for my blessing are you oh yeah i thought i'm sorry i thought you said we were going to fly up there in formation and do it oh yeah yeah mm -hmm. we'll grab that drop or whatever and then i'll uh i'll hang back and i'll i'll smoke an area for it for you okay sounds good Thank you. 
I'm sorry, I was trying to find it. I just lost my load. Guess you gotta go pick it up then. Stay firm. Of course it dropped beneath power lines, this will be fun. It's an easy day, you got this. Yeah, that was all kinds of crazy. Green smokes up. Let me know when you tally it. Tally. You have to be really careful on uh, when you get in there. Your fine flight control is going to be pretty critical, so it's got to be on top of copy. the actual part of the garage there. So. Okay, copy.
Hooked an L to the north. Pull up. Pull up. Copy heading in. I'm out. Strap him on the helipad uh, at the hospital uh, to your south. Copy. to the north. Correction south. Copy 
that. Copy that. I'm out. Next to mine, I believe that you can do it. I don't know what the hell that was. You gotta pay attention to that attitude, that helicopter. If it wants to keep going backwards, it's gonna do it. Alright, let's go ahead and spool down, meet in the middle. I thought I had good flight control. Well, what'd you think? Well, I thought I had good flight had good flight control until I started doing this stuff. So <laughs> definitely, uh, definitely that fine flight control uh, needs a lot of work on this. Um, I mean, I'm happy that I was able to pick them up and drop them off where they're supposed to be, but I did uh, way too much jink jinking and herking and jerking all around. Yeah, and I mean, you're still using the keyboard, aren't you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, that's a lot of it, because it's, I mean, you think about it like a key, 
is either input or no input. Like there's no fine, there's no fine inputs there when it comes to the fine flight control aspect. And that's why it's recommended that a lot of the guys get the uh, joysticks and such. So, yeah, it's on my uh, it's on my Amazon wish list. So it's it's coming up here real soon. The only thing the only thing that concerns me is, I mean, I, I kind of had a good grasp using the setup that I have now. And I'm afraid that if I switch to a joystick now, it's going to fuck me all up and I'm going to end up washing out of flight school. So I'm almost thinking I want to try and get through flight school with the setup I have now and then switch over to the joystick. You'd be surprised, to be honest. Um, Because I originally learned on the keyboard or whatever. I wouldn't even say learned. It was like I initially experienced flight on the keyboard. And I was like, nah, I don't like this. And, uh... And I immediately switched over the joystick, and I, I would say within within two hours of flight on the joystick, I was doing better than I ever was on the keyboard. So you will pick it up. It's the the mental understanding of the char- characteristics and fundamentals of flight. Um, that's not something you have to relearn. Um, you will naturally. It, it'll be a little sketchy at first, um, but when you do get a joystick, um, we'll jump back in here and I'll walk you through the actual. Uh, um, the fine tuning, like the uh, um, setup for the actual um, characteristics of it, like the sensitivity and all that, and uh, and then once that, once you got that or whatever, it's it's fucking solid. It's so easy. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. I'll um. You know, tomorrow's payday, so I guess I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is good though. This gives me uh, this gives me a lot of good stuff to work on to practice because, you know, I got tired of just setting up my airfield, taxiing down the runway, flying to AAC airfield, coming back, and doing all that stuff. So now this actually gives me skills to work on um, between this and the para drop in um, and all that. So yeah. Um, another good thing to work on is uh, for working your uh, approaches and takeoffs is your is maintaining speeds. So like, uh, um, you know, uh, for formation flight, uh, this really helps quite a bit is um, is throttling up to like catch another aircraft and then like throttling back down and adjusting accordingly to um, to fall into formation. Um, right. Cause that's, that's a big thing that, uh, like I sometimes have issues with is, um, like I'm, I'm sketchy when it comes to formation flight, just because I'm not really big on getting all that. Like I'd love getting, you know, close and, and, you know, right, right, good, uh, tight formation. Uh, the issue that I have with it is the, um, uh, is, is when you're flying that tight or whatever, then you have to worry about game issues and especially like on a, on, on an operation size server or whatever. Um, it, it's you're asking for disaster so yeah i've seen that uh before where you know somebody will be lagging and the helicopter will just be like jumping back and forth all over the place um yeah yeah that's so. not something you want to have happen in the tail and a uh, trail formation like <laughs> it's it's shady so right <clears throat> but um yeah that's uh and working on uh so basically what i would do is um and you can set all this up into uh like your own little like drill set to kind of do like every time you hop on here and just make it habitual like every every day or whatever or every day you have time um jump in here for an hour set your radios up go through your comms um you can even jump into another server or whatever if you can if you if you see a server that's got people on it as long as it's not like the official server and they're doing like uh um you know osud or or uh crew training or something like that um then you can very easily like um you know come on uh load in your kit set up your radios and everything and then jump into their channel just so that way they have comps to you let them know what you're doing um and as long as you're not disruptive to their training or whatever um nobody ever really minds so okay that's that's good to know i know uh you know, like, uh, sometimes I'll see like, you know, if, if, if Havoc 3-1 is, is in doing training or something, I've just kind of been staying completely away from, from that server, but, um, Mm -hmm. that's good to know. (laughs) Yeah. So, uh, 
yeah, that's not a, it's not a big issue. Now, as far as like, you know, helping them out with, with stuff or whatever, uh, I mean, it's, it's your own prerogative or whatever. Um, if you can confidently, uh, do a task that they ask of you or whatever, um, if, you know, if they're okay with having, having a student or whatever do it, then that's, that's cool. But, um, you know, it's, it's kind of to each their own or whatever. There are some people who won't fuck with walks and then there are other people who just want to, just want a pilot who will take them from A to B. So, right. Gotcha. If, if that's something that interests you, um, but yeah, as far as like a good little daily drill to get on here and do is what I used to do is um, boot into the server, asset server, whatever. Um, hop on, set up your radios, uh, make sure your radios are all good to go. Uh, number your runway, um, set up a couple of LZs. Like I'll tell you, that's one excellent piece of uh, practice right there is, um, is just like do a lap around like a city or around like an area and find some tight LZs like this, this uh, soccer pitch here. Like this is easy. Like you could land like three Chinooks in here. No problem. Um, but, uh, but just find like tight little LZs or whatever that you can try to land on or whatever. Like I used to for fine flight control practice, I used to take a Chinook and try to back it up to one of those parking garages. So that way people could like walk on and off the ramp on one side. So, Oh, gotcha. Yeah, it's it's all about it's all about it's uh, it's it's all about the the objective you're trying to achieve and, and what you can do uh, to make yourself more proficient uh, by doing those exercises. So, but um, yeah, awesome. Yeah, the the touch and goes are really good. Uh, the airdrop or whatever, like you've seen how it does or whatever. I mean, the more times you do it, the more experience you're going to have with it as far as accuracy goes. Um, I would try to get some time in the little bird or whatever. Um, has anyone shown you how to set up uh, ordnance or whatever on the aircraft? Uh, no, I haven't done any of that yet. Okay, let's grab our boxes. Uh, we'll lift these back to uh, um, uh, back to Gravia, and then uh, I'll, I'll show you how to do that. So. Okay, sounds good. yours first and I'll catch up to you. Copy. Speed one five zero, altitude one fifty. One five zero, one fifty. Remember to get an accurate altitude. You pull up your tads and look at the uh, like the bottom center, just off to the right there, and you'll see the actual uh, meter count there. 
push our uh, altitude to 200 ASL. I actually didn't know that about the TADs. I've been pulling up my altimeter watch to get uh, ASL readings. Eh, at least you know that that's a way as well, so. good because that's what I'm already in. <laughs> Alright, let's make an echelon left. <laughs> Copy. Bring my speed down a little bit because I'm getting a little ahead of you, so. On your left. Stop. We're going to drop our cargo off at the uh, little airstrip off to our left about 10 o'clock there. Altitude and speed on approach or in your discretion. Copy. Son of a bitch, my tipped over. Coming back around to fix it.
right back to grab you. Copy. Low level. And of course, I had my brakes off, so I rolled forward. Boy, you better fix that! <laughs> I'll get this. To be honest, I would completely unbind that uh, whatever key it is to turn your brakes, your wheel brakes on and off. Yeah. At least for rotary wing. Yeah, because that's the same key that I used to hook um, for the sling load, so every time I was hooking for the sling load, I was turning it on and off. Yeah.
Slam it down a little bit harder next time. <laughs> <laughs> That'll work. I said I had it that time. I wasn't going to lose it again. Let's go sort a weapons payload for a helo. We use the Apache. All right, so quick question. What's the first thing you do when you get into a helicopter that has weapons on it? Master safe. There we go. We know how to do that, right? Uh, firm. Groovy. Airbase, Warlords pulling from Whiteford Parking for taxi to Rayon. Make sure we keep that gun up. We will roll on that motherfucker if, uh, we try to land with it anywhere but straight up or forward and up. Oh, I didn't know that. Good to know. So a little tidbit, I don't know, you probably noticed by now, every time you get into a vehicle or a helicopter or anything, um, the 101st Airborne logo appears somewhere on it. Uh, yes. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's the actual, um, what's it called, the uh, clan tag through ARMA when you're a part of the unit. Right, okay. Um, if you uncheck that, because uh, what it actually does is it uh, blocks out your rank tab on your... Um, what's it called, excuse me, on your uniform, um, which is not a big deal. It's not a big deal while you're a walk, but uh, later on or whatever, it will be something that uh, it's it's more of just, like, yeah, it's, it used to work correctly, and now I don't, I think there's some kind of issue with it, but yeah, so, just so you know. How do I, fun. how do I turn that off? Because I don't ever fly in, like, servers or anything anyway. Yeah, um, so you basically go to Um, so when you open up the ARMA launcher on the dashboard, um, if you use, if you uncheck the thing that says my units, right, 
and then that way, or you just say play with that, uncheck that where it has the um, uh, where it has the 506 thing. Okay. And then uh, you check play without a unit. Okay. And then by default, what it should do the next time you load it up is it should say use the same unit or use the same unit as last time, which would be in this case uh, no unit at all. And uh, it'll still like it still reads you as, as part of the unit when you hop into a server. It's just it's not going to um, it won't double post it because basically what it does is it'll double post um, it being on there uh, when you load into a server. Okay. It's kind of iffy, so. I got but, you. All right. So basically, to uh, in order to rearm a helicopter or rearm any aircraft in this, what we have to do is we either have to be by one of these crates right here, um, or we have to be by one of the ordnance trucks like over there. Okay. And so what you're going to do is you're going to roll up to the helicopter, you're going to ace interact on it, and you're going to get – now you can only – did you get all that or – Yeah, I, I see um, attach item and configure pylons. Okay, yeah, so I wasn't sure if I was uh, holding down or keep my, keep, uh, keep myself up. Um, but yeah, so you'll go into uh, configure pylons, and uh, and this will bring up, it'll bring up a menu, and you can't really see it, or you can't see it right now because I'm in it, um, but it'll bring up a menu that allows you to uh, configure uh, things, whatever. Um, I actually see it too. Oh, well, do you? Okay. well, I did, just went away. Nope, I got it. Okay, Okay. so yeah, so um, what I want you to do is go ahead and uh, um, empty all of the uh, racks off this. So what you're going to do is you're going to select all the drop-down bars on every pylon, and you're going to set it to empty. And then once it's set to empty, then you're going to load it. Or, no, you're not. No, you're just going to save it, and then you're going to label it as empty. would go over all the controls with the uh, the Apache for you as far as the gunner stuff, but unfortunately I don't think I have time tonight, so. No, that's okay. No worries. Okay, yeah, I got it saved as empty. So yeah, so make sure that's saved as empty, and then you, uh, yeah, and you're applying it right now. So. Okay. Yep. So you will have to, anytime you want to make configurations or whatever, you need to empty a pylon first before you change it. So if you want to change something from rockets to something else or whatever, then you need to empty it first and then change it. If it's already empty, then you can add something to it, but don't try to switch. From one from one munition or one piece of ordnance to another because it, it can cause uh, glitches sometimes. So, okay. Um, for the um, the Apache is the only one that can use the Ace variants of the um, um, of the uh, AGM one fourteen Hellfires. Um, the Little Bird cannot. It can only use the regular ones, the non Ace variants. So keep that in mind as well. Okay. Um, but yeah, so basically that's what you'll, this is what, this is uh, how you'll, you'll start when you need to go rearm out an aircraft and then you'll, uh, you'll set it up from bear with bear pylons and then you'll set it up as you need it for a mission. So like, let's say, let's say uh, our average loadout for most of the missions is this one. Hang on. We don't have fucking, uh, we 
don't have ligers in here anymore. Hmm. You must have taken them out because they were fucking up. Ah, that's all right. But yeah, the Apache could use either the ace or the non-ace variants of the uh, of the Hellfires. The Little Bird can only use the non-ace variants, so remember that one. Yeah, I'm writing that down now. So now you see pylons are bare. There's no ammo on there. So now we go over to the ammo source, which in this case is these green containers, and it says rearm. You ace interact with that and then rearm it. It'll rearm everything. We used to have this issue where you had to independently rearm each munition out of the helo. I watched a video. I watched a video of that, and that was like a freaking nightmare. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a pain in the ass, uh, especially for like – the, the GAU-19, because you can only load like 100 rounds at one time, or any of the uh, any of the rockets, those are those are a massive pain in the ass, so. But yeah, so as it sits right now, this thing's got 8 kilos and 8 limas on there, I believe. So, um, your kilos are going to be your laser-guided ones, and your limas are going to be your radar-guided ones. Those are really the only two I use. You're going to use more when you're in flight school and whatnot. So, but um, I just I prefer okay. using these because these will take care of ninety percent of the situations they can be in. So, is it pretty much gunner's choice, or is it pilot's choice, or is it? It's pilot's choice. It's it's the crew's choice based on um, based on what the what the operation dictates. So if we're if we're looking at a lot of infantry, then we're probably going to go with. Uh, with Ligers or like Thermobaric uh, um, Hellfires, which are the, the Novembers. Okay, gotcha. Uh, or we might go with uh, Rockets as well and do uh, Rockets and, and Gun Runs. Um, if we're looking at something where we have to deal with a lot of armor or a uh, or we have a lot of AA in the area and we need a weapon that can hit from standoff ranges, then we're going to go with pretty close to what's on here. So, okay, gotcha. Um, let me hop in the gun real quick. I mean, this is kind of crazy, but look at the detail here. Serial number, lot number. You can actually read this shit. Two man lift, 45 kill. I mean, it's just the, the, the detail in this game is unbelievable. I think it's why I love it so much.
Okay, so do me a favor. Align yourself with the helicopter on either the left or right side, and then look straight out. Like this? Uh, as long as you're not in front of the weapons. Okay, I'm good. Alright, so you see that half-ruined building that's about 800 meters away? It's directly to our 12. A, a firm. Alright, so it's painted with a laser right now. If, uh... If you had thermals, you'd be able to see that. So what we're going to do is paint it with a laser. So you can switch over to the uh, um, to the Kilo Hellfires, and it can read that it can read that it has a laser. I confirm that it has a laser, so I'm going to set it. And now I'm going to fire it. And call rifle as I fire. And the building didn't go down, so we're going to fire some more. Oh, you're hitting it. <clears throat> yeah, there's a couple misses in there, whatever, and I, I think it's just the laser picked it up on the wrong spot, so. Um, wasn't really a lesson point to any of that or whatever. Other than well, it's the still cool. ones work, so. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you can basically, with the ace variants, what you can do is you can change their flight path. So prior to launch, is you can set it to where it either has a high angle of attack or a low angle of attack. Um, low just means it'll fly basically contour and nav of the earth as it goes to target. Um, it's good because it gets it there quicker, but the downside is that it's more prone to hitting objects in the flight path of the target. Um, the uh, the advantages of a high side are that uh, with a top down attack, is you're pretty much going to kill whatever you hit, um, and you don't have to worry so much about whatever's in the flight path of it. Um, the downsides are if the vehicle's under like a sheltered area or whatever, then obviously you're going to help hit the sheltered area or the building, um, and then it also takes considerably longer for the missile to hit its target. So, Roger. But these things will trace ridiculously good. Same with the uh, the dagger rockets, um, which are just laser guided uh, um, or semi active, like laser guided rockets. Um, those aren't too bad. Um, and then the uh, the Novembers they trace the same way. So the only thing that doesn't actually trace by laser of all the guided munitions that we use are the uh, the Limas, the AGM one fourteen Limas the Lima Hellfires, um, those trace by radar. And uh, the radar is nice because um, 
when you radar lock something up with the radar, like you can see exactly what you're locking up. So you can tally between, or you can toggle between different targets and cycle through until you know exactly what you want. And then as soon as it's locked up, you could fire. And because all these weapons are fire and forget, um, like uh, with a laser, or whatever. Um, so if we're not running a laser, or if we can't see the actual, uh, we can't get an accurate toggle on the laser. What um, what the guys on the on the ground can do if they have a designator is they can paint it, and then we can just rifle off. It doesn't matter where we are. We can just rifle off in the general direction a Hellfire that has laser guidance, and uh, that Hellfire will pick up that laser and track it. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So it, in, in yeah. that situation, it is like fire and forget. It's... Yeah. So it's, <sighs> you'll, we'll hear that a couple times. Uh, you'll hear that throughout uh, your time with Warlord is um, or with the Apache is that uh, like uh, the ground controller might tell you like, hey, fire, regardless if you tally a laser or not, fire a kilo or fire, fire ordinance. Um, and then you'll, you'll just be like, okay, fire it. And uh, you'll send it and then you'll, you'll get it. You'll like, uh, uh, the, sometimes it'll, it'll act funny and you won't get a hit on target. And then other times it'll, it'll behave amazingly and you'll get a hit on target from, you know, something that you didn't actually see or even know that was there. So. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, the radar is nice because you can, you can tally exactly, um, what your, what your radar locked onto. So you can see, um, it's really good for ISR too, because you might not be able, like you can identify the thermal cam or with the, uh, with the camera on that thing, um, from a pretty good distance away, you can tell exactly what a vehicle is. Um, but sometimes you might not be able to based on a thermal signature at the distance that you are away from target. And you might flip over to uh, to radar, lock it up, and then realize like, oh shit, that's a T seventy two. Um, so something that you originally thought was not a big deal, or you know, quite possibly not a big deal, now it gets prioritized at the top. So, um, and then the same with like uh, with a BTR or something, like you might uh, you might see it or whatever on thermals. You know, yeah, that's a BTR. I see wheels on it. Um, but the thermals might not indicate every aspect of that BTR, and then you might lock it up with a radar thinking it's BTR 60, and instead you get a BTR 80. So it goes from pretty low to your priority to pretty pretty high on your priority list. So. Right. The BTR 80, that's with the uh, tow launcher? Uh, it's got a tow launcher, and I, or it doesn't have the tow. What does it have? I think it has the Conkers. Okay. The, the conquers or the forgot I don't remember but um it uh, it has one of the two but it's the B, the big thing on the BTR is the auto cannon um, that thing is fucking devastating to ground troops um, in fact any auto cannon um, in this game generally speaking is uh, is devastating the infantry whether it's a Tunguska or a ZU or a Shilka or uh, or the BTR or whatever it's um all those things fucking suck to be on the wrong end of, so. Yeah, no doubt. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of a, a crash course or whatever on the on the Hellfires or whatever. The Novembers, they're, those are, uh, so like I said, you have four variants of the uh, of the Hellfire. Um, you got the Kilos, the Limas, the Novembers, and the Mikes. Um, the Mikes are good, um, they're good all-purpose missiles. So they're, they're fragmentary, high-explosive, I believe. Um, let me double check that actually. It's another thing too is, um, yeah, so we got Lima's, Kilos, and November's. Why do I not see Mike's on here? What the fuck? Well, anyway, I'm pretty sure that the Mike's are the... Um, they're basically like general purpose fragmentation. Um, uh, Hellfires, they're good for... Um, they're good for multiple, like a wide variety of threats. Um... Let me double check that actually. That's really going to bother me because it's not actually in the flight book. Yeah, 
it's got the mics in here. Stand clear. Clear. Oh yeah, for him. I'm just trying to get a good look at that building. That was a pretty close de detonation on that one. That was one of the uh, Lima's without a radar lock, so. Oh. You mean that detonation? <laughs> So that wasn't even close to where I was aimed at, so. No fucking clue where that one went. That one was good. <laughs> that was that pretty, was pretty cool. nuts. <laughs> Yeah, so I think the I think the mics are the um, they're the fragmentation. They're like general purpose uh, um, uh, anti tank ones, I believe, if I remember right. I can't remember exactly what they are. No, okay, I think they're I think they're just the laser guided version of the Limas. So they're like the anti tank versions. Um, okay, I believe I'd have to double check that. Um, but the Novembers are the, um, those are the anti-infantry ones, basically, um, are really good for enclosed spaces. 
um, the Novembers or whatever, the way I remember them, like uh, they're basically they're referred to as thermobaric fragmentation. Um, the way I think about it or whatever, thermobaric or whatever is typically your more powerful ordinance because of dispersion or whatever. And the only thing generally more powerful than thermobaric as far as like uh, any personnel destruction is something nuclear. So and nuclear thermobaric. Right. Good way gotcha. To remember them. Yeah. Um, I think um, I think for me, like the barrack part, so like like the shock wave um, wouldn't really affect a tank, but it would affect troops. Yeah, exactly. They're very, very good for anti-infantry and blast over pressure in a confined space. So you're going to use those in like bunkers, pillboxes, built up uh, military areas, basically areas where, uh, you know, the actual uh, uh, fragmentation and high explosive energy of the, the warhead can be focused at. Um, they're not going to have, uh, like, a, like you said, they're not going to have good uh, uh, armor piercing ability. That's Roger. not to say that you can't use one on light armor in a pinch, but don't expect to take one out and have or have good effect on target when you're engaged with like a T seventy two or a T eighty with it. So, Roger. But um, oh yeah, and then we got so we got the sidewinders here. Um, they're working. I, I believe we are working on uh, a fix to try and get these corrected. Is right now um, they function, but you basically can't get lock up until you're like in an obscenely close distance away from a target. Um, but those are going to be your uh, your anti air um, or your air to air uh, uh, missiles for other helicopters or for aircraft in the AO. So okay, um, <clears throat> and then you got the chain gun, the M two thirty. That thing's a fucking beast. Um, it's really it's it's kind of sketchy to use it at first because you have to learn and understand that it needs to be zeroed basically after each shot, and uh, and the best way to do that is to basically just spam the uh, re-zeroing or the uh, yeah like your your key that you'll set up for re-zeroing. Um. So, but once you have that down or whatever, um, and you're just spamming that as you're going along. Uh, lighten up infantry or whatever. It's it's it works like a charm. Um, the okay. blast effect on it for the shells or whatever is really good. Um, you can drop light vehicles, no problem. Pick up trucks, uh, unarmored uh, threats or light armor threats. Like uh, um, would be a really good example of that. Um, I would say no higher than like a BTR sixty. Uh, I would say generally we would uh, we would hit that with uh, more more formal ordnance. Um, if we didn't have time to, and we were just type three control with the guns, then we would be lighting, you know, we would see that in the AO and then try to disable it at the very least with the gun and then roll back over to the infantry. Um, so, but yeah, that thing will work exceptionally well. Um, you can do a lot of fucking damage with a hundred rounds in that. So or not even with a hundred rounds, I'd say with like 50 rounds, five, 10 round bursts with that thing are, uh, is, is pretty devastating. And then you, you know, you get 1,200 rounds of that, so you're pretty spoiled. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and then we also got uh, some of the other rockets or whatever. Um, so like I was trying to get earlier, the uh, the, uh, the Ligers, as we call them, the unguided or the, uh, the laser-guided uh, semi-active uh, line-of-sight uh, rockets. Uh, those are like 70-millimeter rockets. We can use those things for a lot of different um, purposes. Um, generally, it's either... Um, we we'll use them on uh, light or medium armor, um, as well as um, as well as infantry or built-up targets. Um, they're good for that. Uh, mortar pits, they're not bad for that either. So, um, and then you have the unguided rockets, which are um, if you go into there, it's like the M260, um, the M261, or the M151, or the M229. Um, those are 70 millimeter, uh, two and a half inch uh, dump fire uh, hydro rockets. So um, those don't have any guidance tracking ability at all, or whatever. It's just kind of uh, um, fire where the crosshair is. So okay, gotcha. It's a crosshair. Um, right. But let's see what else. What else can we work into? Hey, let me ask you. Um... 
as far as loadouts go, so you're wearing the iHeads helmet right now, correct? Nope. I'm just wearing the regular, the regular ass, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the regular ass OD helmet. Okay. So the iHeads helmet, that's only for Warlord, correct? Yep, that's only for the Apache. And what that does basically is it uh, implements like a full down uh, targeting system. And uh, it allows you to guide your ordnance in as the pilot or gunner by uh, line of sight. So if there's something that you can see better um, on the uh, on the iHads, or actually it's it's better for the pilot because the gunner's going to have um, uh, the gunner's going to have those options or whatever. Um, but the pilot can guide that stuff in or whatever manually using that that eyepiece. Um, I'm not exactly full like front to back. Uh, familiar on how it works just because it's not something that's covered in flight school um so hopefully that's something that we might hit up um maybe friday on practice i don't know i i know we're supposed to be i'm supposed to be doing jtacking stuff tomorrow uh and working on that qual so okay but yeah i was uh, just curious about that because uh there's so many like helmet choices and everything and like you know, I wasn't sure which one I should pick for my night because the night our night loadout shouldn't have the visor down, correct? Right. I mean, obviously you can't. You know, if you got a sun visor down, that's meant for when you're flying up in the air, or whatever. And you got that down when it's pitch fucking black out, then you kind of look like a dipshit. So. Right. Yeah. So I just um, wanted to make sure I, I I picked the right helmets and stuff. Yeah. Um. And I mean, ultimately, it comes down to this: like, save save a base helmet in your kit. Um. And then that way, uh, that way, when you load into a server and you see it's night, you just switch out your helmet. Um, yeah, I guess that makes sense because Lord knows we got enough, uh, we got enough room. Yeah, and I mean, uh, with this newest hotfix or whatever, uh, the iHat should be able to mount night vision again, so you should be able to. Uh, um, you could honestly save the iHats to every single, um, uh, to every single setup. Um, and then that way or whatever, that could be your just daytime helmet. Um, and then, uh, nighttime or whatever, like, uh, I mean, you could, you could still, or that could be your nighttime helmet for pretty much your, your general purpose helmet for everything. Um, and then if you're rolling in, uh, if you're rolling in warlord or whatever, then you've already got it set up. So. Gotcha. But yeah, that's kind of the only issue with the eye hats or that just got resolved as far as I know. Uh, with this latest uh, hotfix, is the uh, um, is that the fucking the iHads now works with night vision? Because before it didn't work. Like you, you could either have iHads, you could have night vision, but you couldn't have both. So awesome. Yeah. Um, I would throw down some fucking AA threats. And uh, show you what it's like to get like locked up and stuff, but I think that's probably better done for like uh, later on um, when we get together and and do like uh, your day two or, or or after like day two. So okay, yeah, that sounds good. I um, messaged Chief Blair tonight. I was gonna see about getting him on to do my day two, um, but he's on leave until next week. So I think I'm gonna just hold off until he gets back. I think I'd kind of like to just stick with him as much as possible. I like his teaching style, so. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, and yeah, and Chief Ringrose is, uh, is pretty chill too, whatever. Um, yeah, he's, uh, I mean, he's a, he's a hard ass on the scores for sure, but, um, yeah, he's, uh, he's good. He's good people too. And then, uh, you know, like Bow Bowman's good and everything, but he's uh, he's getting wore the fuck out on this stuff. Um, yeah, I can imagine. Kind of, uh, yeah, he's um, it, it doesn't mean he's a bad teacher. It just means he has less patience for for shit. Uh, or I shouldn't say shit, but um, people who or students rather that don't have their their stuff like immediately squared away. Because um, then, like uh, you know, instead of uh what could have been a one hour or an hour and a half or potentially a two hour class now turns into a three or four hour class. Um, and, uh, yeah, it gets, it gets, it gets a bit taxing. So especially on him, he's, he's, he's pretty checked out. So. 
Yeah, when uh, he's leaving in, I think you said June. Uh, I think it might even be sooner than that. He's he's not sure yet. So and it'll be Chief Blair taking over after that. So. Uh, okay, gotcha. Um, yeah, and then with uh, Captain Soto going to reserves or whatever, um, depending on when a spot for Thunder opens up or whatever, that might end up meaning that uh, uh, Chief Ring Rose goes to that. So it's it's going to be tight fucking Manning and uh, Deco. And I yeah. don't think Webb's ever. I don't think Webb from uh, from Blair section or Chief Blair section is ever coming back. So. I think he he did his day four and then he he just quit at basically on the last site exercise of day four, and uh, we have, I don't think anyone's heard from him since. So. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, that was like that was. Yeah, I read I that. My, I read that report. Yeah, I was on my day three, and uh, <clears throat> and I was in there J tagging with Bowman, and uh, we were we were sitting there for like fifteen minutes. After the uh, after the the crash simulated thing, like trying to figure out what was going on there, and uh, yeah, so that doesn't seem too promising. Um, but yeah, uh, you Dask, uh, hopefully Eric Eric uh, shapes up good or whatever. Uh, he was a little rough in the beginning, but or whatever. But I mean, we all pretty much are so. Right. But. All right, well, I'm going to go bomb this thing around for a quick second, so you're welcome to join. Oh, okay, cool. Actually, I'm going I'm to reset the uh, – I'm going to throw rockets in, so. How do, I, um, how do I get into the gun sights when I'm, uh, when I'm up front? Uh, it's going to be uh, right-click. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, well, I won't bore anybody anymore. We're just uh, kind of dicking around now. So uh, thank you for watching, and I greatly appreciate it. Um, got a lot of work to do, so hopefully the next time you see me flying this kind of stuff will be uh, a lot better. So.